when I do give uh, clinic, I don't really have a set pattern how I do it. I usually think of it as like uh, an exchange program between uh, the people that come, which mostly are drummers, and myself. And like uh, we talk over concepts, drumming concepts, because okay, uh, me being a professional drummer, and I know most of you are are also, and that means you make money for playing. Uh, and I'm out there, and I've you know made a lot of records and done a lot of things. Uh, people ask me my opinions about things, and uh, I think that like in an exchange basis, someone who's been practicing like for three or four years, whatever, ha that has a different approach to practicing or playing a drum set, I may talk to him and get a totally different concept about how I should approach the drum set. I don't think that there's any gospel about you should do it this way or do it that way as opposed to any other way. I think the best uh, uh, thing that I could say for any young musician, not just drummer, but any young musician, is that you should do what feels comfortable for you, no matter what it is. I, I mean, I have a very unorthodox approach to playing the drum set. Uh, as far as uh, playing rudiments and things are concerned, I think that like you definitely do need to practice your rudiments and play rudiments, because I think rudiments are used as a tool, and they're just a way to get from point A to point B. It's a lot simpler to get from point A to point B using your rudiments, because those, these are the things that uh, have been set up to uh, get through this language of playing the drums. And uh, for me, you know, uh, I'm not a rudimental player, and I do things that are pretty unorthodox. I do things, uh, I mean, um, however I get the sound, that's the way I do it. You know, I'm, if you play with your elbows, your hands, and, you know, kick the drums or whatever, if there's a sound, particular sound that you want to get, however you get it is the bottom line. Like, uh, I know a lot of people listen to a lot of records and like, they say, oh man, you know, I hear this, this thing. And uh, they ask someone, they say, well, what is that, that you know, this guy's playing? You know, or they go to do a concert and they see him play it, and they say, oh man, look at that. And they try to emulate what uh, uh, he's doing by, you know, setting the drums up the same way that particular guy sets up his drum set and sits, you know, like I've seen guys like with cymbals way up here, you know, like their favorite drummer has a, has a cymbal way up here, you know, like they play like this or whatever. And, you know, I think what works best is, is whatever works for that particular person. Uh, and uh, if, you know, your favorite drummer has a cymbal way up here and he plays like that and you'd like to play like him, maybe the answer is not to put your cymbal up there and play like that, but it's just to do it however you feel comfortable and get the same results, the same sound. I think that that is the real bottom line. It's like, okay, as I said, like listening to a particular tape or listening to a record and you hear something that someone did that you like and uh, you say, well, oh, I'd like to be able to do that. How did he do that? And uh, you listen to it and you say, okay, wow, it sounds close to me. Then you go see this guy play and it's, he plays it totally different than the way you did it. You know, and it's like, oh, maybe, maybe I'm doing it wrong. I don't think that's the answer. I think that if the closer you get to what you want to achieve, however you achieve it is the best answer, and that's the best way to do it. You know? uh, I play left-handed, right-footed. So my drum set is set up for a right-handed drummer. Like uh, most of the drummers today are right-handed. And then you get some that are left-handed. Then you get some that are really in a minority that are confused. <laughs> no. um, Billy Cobham plays the same way I do also, which is we play sitting at the drum set like a right-handed drummer would play. Normally, a right-handed drummer would take and cross over and play the hi-hat like this, you know. But uh, when I started to play the drums, I picked up the sticks and started to play like this. This is the most natural way for me to play. I think that it is the most natural way to play because there's no crossover as far as like, you know, playing like this. A lot of like, you know, you play a ride cymbal here and you, you, you know, do this, and, you know, and play like that. Um, but then, you know, when you do play high, play the hi-hat, you have to cross over and play it like this. This way, I don't have to do that. And it is more natural for me to play this way. And I feel more, most comfortable doing that. And as far as, any other things that are unorthodox. I have this uh, a theory that whatever I can do to get the sound that I want, that's what I'll do. I mean, if I want to bang the drums or whatever, that's what I'll do to get the sound that I want. There's no set pattern. There's no set thing that I uh, 
work on to get, you know, my concept across. I think it's my, con my basic concept of playing the instrument is to be as relaxed as I can be and uh, uh, get my point across. I'm, I'm more into finessing the drum set as opposed to muscling the drum set. So how do you feel about using he heavy metal sticks uh, to help build up your chops? In the long run, um, constant practice will be the answer. Um, as far as playing with heavier sticks, I've tried both things. I've played with heavier sticks and uh, uh, got to the, to the point where like, I thought that like, playing with the heavier sticks would help me uh, uh, when I picked up the sticks that I usually use because they would be much lighter or whatever. Um, I've used the approach where I've gotten weights and, you know, I had, you know, five pound weights in each hand and, like, you know, practice doing things with dumbbells on, on, on each hand to, to build up that strength. I think that, uh, again, if it works for you, that's what you should do. I know a lot of people that I've talked to that are totally against that. They feel as though, like, you should play with the sticks that you have and just, you know, build up your chops that way. And, and have the most natural feel, take the sticks that you usually use and have the most natural feel with that. Again, I say that um, if it works, I think that that's the, the bottom line. If, if you feel as though like it is, uh, you're passing that plateau. I think more so uh, that plateau that you want to pass is more or less a mental thing than anything. I think that uh, that's one of the biggest problems that drummers have. I think that's one of the problems that separates good drummers from being great drummers. It's like there's this mental block. It's like uh, I, when I you know, went out and did clinics, I would ask someone from the audience to come up and play. Before I even played, before I sat down to the drums, I asked someone else to come up and play, and they were like, who, what, me, who, me? You know? And everyone was like kind of afraid because they were afraid of what all the other drummers would think of what they did, you know? Oh, uh, like, you know, they come up and play and, you know, like the guys would sit back there and say, yeah, he's okay, but like uh, his left hand is no good, you know, or his foot's no good. And uh, I don't think that you should really worry about that. I think that, like, you should worry about uh, um, getting the results that you want in what you do. And uh, if you've reached a particular point where, like, you want to get past that point, you say, like, okay, my hands don't work. You know, that's because that's probably what it is, right? My hands don't work, and like I want to get it to, I want to be able to play around the set a lot fast or whatever. It's more or less a mental lapse. I mean, it's a mental block that you go through to say, oh, I can't do this anymore. Or like, what do I do to get to this point? Practicing is a is a concept. I mean, you should practice however long it is to get to do what you want to do. If it's playing paradiddles faster, then when you play the power, when you practice, you play the power as fast. If you practice one hour a day, if you practice seven hours a day, it doesn't matter. It depends upon what it is you want to do. And once you learn to get to that point and you do what you want to do, then there's no need for you to practice. That's just my opinion also. It's not gospel. I mean, that's just my approach. You know. Is it better to practice slow or fast? Um, well, I, I, I think the most important thing about practicing slow or fast, I think the most more important than that is learning how to relax. Uh, I think that that is a real problem uh, with, with, especially with young drummers. And uh, they come up and they sit down on a drum set and right away it's like <laughs> they play everything real fast, you know. And like that's supposed to impress everyone. But when they're asked to play a groove, a simple groove, they can't do that. And you know, I think uh, practicing fast or slow is not the answer. I think practicing so that you relax. And once you relax, then you can play fast. And once you relax, you can play as slow as you want. You know what I'm saying? So it's not a matter of like, seeing how fast you can play real fast. You know, it's like, oh, but, but if you're not relaxed doing that, it's not going to really even, it should even itself out. You know, the thing is, is like, you should look like, I mean, the way you should approach your drum set is like, if someone watches you play, it should be, wow, he's not moving at all. But where is all that sound coming from? But I think that that's the answer is like, you know, it's not playing fast or slow. It's relaxing. And then once you relax, then you can play as fast or as slow as you want. Because you know you have a confidence, you know, once you relax. 
Lenny, do you still practice? Do you need to practice, or do you even get a chance to practice? I don't practice. I'm going to start, though. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to start. Well, just, you know, the thing is, is like the reason why I didn't practice is because I had gotten to a point where I was happy with what I was doing, and there was nothing new that I really wanted to do. I had, you know, diverted my efforts and, and, and energies into another area of music, which is trying to write music and produce records and, and uh, uh, arrange music. So um, now I'm going to get an opportunity to go out and play again um, the way that I want to play. And so now I'm going to start to go back in and practice again. And well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to get uh, re-familiarize myself with the, the type of music that I'm going to go out and play, which is fusion music. And, and uh, once I re-familiarize re myself with that idiom again, it's not that like it's, uh, I've left it, you know, but it's just that like, you know, once I re-familiarize myself with the concepts that are involved in that, uh, then I'll sit down and, and um, use conceptually what I thought about and use that approach to my instrument. See, I think that like all of it is based on approach, whether you're playing Funk music, we'll be playing fusion, rock and roll, jazz music, like it's all approach. And once you gear yourself to that particular type of music and how you're going to approach it, then the personal person comes out and plays it. That's why you have so many different jazz drummers sounding different. You have so many different rock and roll drummers sounding different. But they all play the same basic beat. There's nothing new, you know? I mean, like, it's the root is how, how many rudiments are there, you know? There's there are no new rudiments, but there are infinite possibilities of the combination. Relaxation is, is, is the main uh, um, focal point, but also, like, I, mean, I listen a lot to Latin music, and my approach to playing is like playing timbales. If you notice the way I play, uh, as far as playing on top of the beat, knowing that there's a bed laid down by whatever other musicians or whatever, that I'm playing with at the time, I play on top of the beat as a timbali player would play. I listened a lot to uh, Restus Villato and, and um, uh, Nicky, excuse me, Rao, who played with um, 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 Eddie Palmieri, and I listened a lot to uh, um, even Chipito, who used to play with Santana, you know, and I listened to these people, and uh, my approach to playing the instrument is like that.
concept is not to overpower the band, but again, to finesse the band, you know, to make it slick, you know, to say like, yeah, I'd, I'd rather somebody listen to the way I play and say, wow, that was really interesting, than to say, wow, man, he plays singles unbelievably straight. You know what I'm saying? There is a difference, because I think that like, uh, it's more of a melodic, interesting musical concept than it is a technical approach to playing the drums because we are playing a musical instrument as opposed to just being the drums hey man i play drums do 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 you know and the thing is is uh, i think that like, it should be a musical approach we were talking before about the inspiration that you got as a as a kid from practicing along with records when you did start out where did, did, was it from exercising or listening to records or practicing with records or a teacher or what exactly that really uh, inspired you to progress? That's a, that's a real good question. Um, I think the thing that inspired me the most was the fact that uh, playing, the, playing the drums is something that I wanted to do. And I had, my father had a library of records, old jazz records that I could listen to. And I remember I used to like, um, you know, Dave Brubeck Quartet with Joe Morello was in it. And uh, 
I can take you over to my mother and father's house now, and you can see where, like, it said, you know, Dave Rubeck Quartet, and Dave Rubeck, and um, uh, Paul Desmond, and uh, um, Eugene Wright, and Joe Morello, and I'd write my name in there also, like, on the album, you know. And, and, I, and, I, and I thought that, like, it was a real, win it would be a real dream come true for me to play on a record like these guys were playing. I'd sit down in my basement, put on the record, and practice playing with the record. And I got so inspired by that. It was like, there was, I mean, there wasn't any time in the day that I would not practice. I'd be in school and I'd take my pencils and, you know, and I'd practice playing, you know, like rudiments with my feet. And, and like, you know, I, there was this desire that I had to one day make a record and play like these guys that were on the record. And uh, that's what carried me all through that early period. And like, I couldn't get enough of playing the instrument. I would always sit down and practice. I would practice playing, I would practice more so than anything, I'd practice swinging. I'd practice with, a, I'd take a cymbal, just a cymbal by itself. And I remember I, hear, I used to listen, I listened to a Tony Williams, I mean a Miles Davis record, a Tony Williams was playing. And then, you know, like you could hear distinctly his cymbal beat. And I said, man, you know, I used to take just a cymbal and go sit into a corner, you know, like where, you know, the walls come together like this, and sit down and just play the cymbal. And just do that so that I could hear every little cymbal beat that I played. And I wanted it to be distinct. I wanted it to be so like, you know, it wouldn't be a shh, but you could hear You could hear everything. And I would practice that without anything else. And then I would, you know, bring the hi-hat in, then the snare drum, or whatever. And I'd practice swinging, more so than playing rudiments. That's why I'm not a rudimental player. And I always practice swinging the band more so than anything else. And uh, a lot of times when I'm playing straight ahead music now, what I'll do is I'll play flat-footed. I'll play, you know, on the cymbal, and I will not play any bass drum, and I will not play any hi-hat for a while. Just to swing the band with just playing the cymbal and the snare drum just to see, you know, if I can still do that, uh, see, see if that works. And then gradually I'll bring in the hi-hat and bring in the other drums, you know. It's not necessarily to play all the drums that are here, you know. It's, it's necessary, number one, to swing the band. And, and that's what I practice most. I practice swinging the band, and, and I was inspired by all those records that I listened to. It, it was a matter of being able to take a point on a record and, and uh, centralize a certain thing that the drummer was playing at the time, listen to it, you know, because there's, you know, on a record there's, you know, however many people are on there, there's keyboard, I mean the piano player, but, or whatever, but you isolated it and you listen to the, what the drummer was doing and you say, oh yeah, and then like you would retain that, sit down and try to emulate what you retain from listening to the record. Like the take five solo, I could play the take five solo note for note, and and uh, uh, like Art Blakey stuff, I could play Art Blakey solo note for note, and I, and then later on I got to realize that that's not the answer. That's not the only, but is to listen to what that solo, what that particular person did in that solo, and to take out of it what I could retain for myself and my into my own approach to playing the instrument. You know, and, and to listen to the guys that influenced that guy that I listened to. And to, you know, grasp and, and, and take from, from those influences what it is that I could grasp, take for myself. I think that, that that's, it's really good for young musicians, young drummers to, to do that. To be able to centralize on a particular thing that a drummer that they like does. Retain it and then emulate it. And from that, learn what you did and take it the next step. And use that and, and uh, 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 use that in your approach to playing the instrument. And that gives you your personal style. For, for the longest time, man, you know, I would emulate Tony Williams and like people, I mean, I thought that I sounded exactly like Tony Williams, man, it was great. It was like, yeah, right, you know. And I played with Jackie McLean who, and one night, um, Woody Shaw came up to me and said, man, yeah, you sound great. And I thought he was going to say, yeah, you sound just like Tony. He said, yeah, you sound just like Jack Dee Smith. 
Come on, what is it? What? You know, what are you talking about? I know I sound like Tony Williams, but I mean, it's just, you know what I mean? It's my own reality of where I was at at that time, and, you know, other people listening to me and picking up what they thought it was, you know? So I think that, like, you know, everybody plays through, and, and, and please don't ever listen to a drummer that says, hey, I'm playing my own stuff. Hey, man, I got, hey, I don't, you know, I don't listen to nobody. I got my, give me a break, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like, there's, there's nobody that's doing that because of the fact that, like, there, as I, you know, there are only a certain amount of rudiments. Now, the way that you approach, approach it is different. But, you know, everything has been done before, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, the more people realize that and, to, you know, start listening to, to uh, um, musicians and not just drummers, but listening to musicians and not worrying about, you know, hey, this is my stuff or whatever. But, you know, worrying about, like, really sounding good and pushing the band and making it work. I think it would be a lot, be a lot better. You know? My style was a hybrid of all the other different areas of music that I had played. Um, fusion music, um, jazz fusion or whatever, it had its roots like with Miles Davis and, and Mahavishnu and Return to Forever and Weather Report. So at the time, there was nobody, and you know, like Tony Williams' Lifetime. At the time, I had listened to Tony Williams' Lifetime, but at that point, I had played with Miles Davis and Freddie Hubbard and, and Lightning Hopkins and um, um, Santana. And you know, there was so many very different kinds of music that I had played that it all came together and form this fusion type music. And that's what all that music was anyway, was like a formation of that. And I think that for a young musician, not just drum, but for a young musician, I think the best thing to do is to play as many different kinds of music as you can. And to be as well versed in those kinds of music as you can. And at that point, once you do that, you'll realize that no matter what it is, whether it's Latin music, jazz music, rock and roll, or funk, it'll, be, it'll come out sounding like you because there'll be certain things that you do in all those kinds of music that will be the same thing all the time. You'll say, hey, man, I play this rudiment here all the time. I mean, one, I wonder why I do that. But it's like, that's what makes it personal to you. That's what makes your style personal. I mean, like, you know, there's a rudiment that I play all the time, which um, is a flam. Swiss triplet or whatever you call it, it's like <laughs> and I play and like I play it all the time. I mean that I mean that's just what feels comfortable to me. And whenever I improvise I play that based on that rudiment. So like I think that you'll find a niche, whatever kind of music it is that you're playing, whether it is jazz or rock or punk or whatever it is, you know? And that's what'll happen. I think that like if you concentrate on just one type of music, you'll just develop to that point where it'll just be that one type of music, and you'll be a specialist in that type of music, and you won't be able to do anything else. So I think that like you should listen to as many different kinds of music as you can, and from that, you'll develop your own personal.